Well, thank you very much, Anushka. Um, I will I will try a, a, a little bit. I, I happen to share that assessment, really. Uh, but um, I wanted to pick up on a couple of things that uh, John said in his excellent summary of the situation that faces uh, women in Afghanistan and, and the broader region. Um, the fact that security and women's development go hand in hand, I think, is a very important point. And the other very important point is that uh, the position of women in development policy has to be absolutely fundamental. Not just in Afghanistan, uh, in, in every part of the world that is seeking to advance. It is women and girl children especially who are, through their empowerment, going to effect change. And any development strategy that doesn't have the rights of women and the girl child at its core is destined to fail, not just the women, but the whole society. And I learned that really over, oh, I've been working in the area of development, particularly with regards to women, for 20 years, mostly with Africa, in fact. But it is absolutely so true, when you see it on the ground, the advances that can be made to help women help themselves, not just do things for them, uh, is absolutely fundamental and you know, drives a huge amount of effectiveness of policy. Going back to Afghanistan in particular, um, I pay tribute to the amazing bravery of the women there. The, the, the women who have not had the benefit of education, who live, as Lucia was saying, in daily fear of their lives and the threat of violence, but also the amazing women leaders, some of whom have visited Parliament. I met Fazia Kufi, who some of you I'm sure will have met, uh, a member of the Afghan parliament, a most tremendous, dignified woman who uh, really inspired me. And then um, also we had a visit from Saleh Gaffar, organised by ActionAid, who I must say do fantastic work in this field. Uh, and Saleh Gaffar heads up the Humanitarian Assistance for Women and Children organisation in Afghanistan and takes the battle out into the uh, agricultural regions, you know, away from the main cities because that's where the sort of locus of oppression is at its worst and that's where a lot of the backsliding is occurring because I won't reiterate the statistics that other um, panellists have already given about the, the progress which has been uh, you know very significant politically, economically, educationally and in health there has been considerable progress since 2001 uh, but it is so fragile and, of course, some of the progress is not what it seems. And we have to face the fact that in a lot of the um, less developed parts of Afghanistan, uh, the clock is already going backwards. So, you know, this is a big worry to me. Um, but when I say all is not as it seems, you know, the figure of 27% female parliamentarians, that is great. But there are a number of those women who are essentially place women uh, and... That goes for a lot of the developing world, in fact, where they have quotas for women MPs. Quite a bit of the time, unfortunately, the women who get elected are the wives of you know, people who are men in the establishment who are actually really, beneath their fine words, quite keen on the status quo. And, and that's the same in a lot of other countries as well. Uh, so that's what women like Fauzia are up against. And that's why it's not just important that a lot of women come to these international conferences so the women's voice is heard. It's actually important which women. Um, so, you know, ActionAid are close uh, to the, on the ground and, and that they can keep us informed, I hope, about the women we really want to see at these international conferences. Uh, the other, another point that um, John made, which is absolutely vital, is economic independence. Um, the... The economic independence of women is also fundamental to um, bedding down some of these changes uh, that have been for the positive in Afghanistan. And of course, that is the, you know, it's, it's about education first. Um, but ultimately, women's dependence on men in that society is down to the fact that they are utterly economically dependent on the male members of their families. 
Um, this is a big, big problem in that country and across the developing world, really. Uh, so anything we can do in our aid and development um, strategy to facilitate women to start to work outside the home, to, to start their own small businesses. I mean, there's a lot of work that's been done um, with microfinance in Bangladesh that we can learn from, and in other countries as well. And see, the Commonwealth Parliamentary Association held a meeting um, in Parliament about six weeks ago that I attended with Afghan and Pakistani women coming over, and they told us that they wanted um, to see support for women-owned small businesses and enterprises to help this progress, uh, and there is considerable potential for that. And I just want to say a word about our aid uh, investment in Afghanistan. I've got the figures here for how we spend the considerable sum we do spend. And I'm surprised that only five million is spent on education because by spending money on education, one is helping the girl child. And we know what the Taliban's strategy was during the 1990s. It was to ban all girls from getting any education at all. And that was, what, that was how they put in place their insidious and evil regime. And be under no illusion, they'll have that back on the agenda. And we know that um, in parts of Afghanistan, um, you know, ch the schools are being set fire to, girls are uh, you know, being prevented by violence from attending school. Uh, they know that that is how to keep women in the dark ages, is to deny them education. And that's what w the w women there will be up against. So I think we should probably be spending more on education uh, as a proportion um, of this budget. And um, I will be taking up John Speller's point with um, Andrew Mitchell that we really need to go through this aid budget with a fine tooth cane. Surely we can um, find within that aid budget quite a substantial amount of money towards your 90 million target, 90 million dollar target. I would have thought we could find a substantial amount of it. And the EU budget as well. Um, the EU doesn't spend as much as the UK, but it does spend zero on education, oddly enough, the EU budget. I wonder why that is. Anyway, there's work to be done there, because well, I think we can probably find some of that money, because it is absolutely vital. The fear of violence is what keeps women in the home, where the Taliban think they should be. Um, finally, I'd just like to make the point that this is... Um, a global struggle. I'm beginning to stand like my, like I did in my student days, but it is a global issue, and there is a very worrying signs of Taliban type of extremism now operating with the militant Islamist groups in Africa. Um, organisations like Al Shabaab, um, there's Nigeria, Mali. Um, there's terrible things going on to women and ch uh, girl children in those countries. But, uh, you know, engineered by the militant extremists, uh, and that is a big threat. As long ago, I'll just finish with one story from the work that I used to do. I was a, um, a, a patron and um, executive member of an African women's organisation, and we had um, offices in Nigeria and Kenya, and they worked all over Africa. And while I was involved with them, which is over 10 years ago now, the um, Islamists in the north of Nigeria burned our office down. And they were, even in those days, bat, you know, trying to get women off the airwaves. So, you know, that it, it, Afghanistan is the major issue. And the Tokyo Conference is another milestone that we can really, you know, take uh, to drum home our message. But it isn't just Afghanistan and Pakistan. It's spreading across Africa now as well, which is why I'm so glad the... Um, Miss Fuchs, Baroness Fuchs, is it, um, mentioned the, um, the mission next year for the UN. CSW. Yeah, CSW mission. Uh, that's definitely something I didn't know about and something that we should support because, you know, this is a, an issue throughout uh, many countries and it requires a very, very determined response from women here and in the West. We are so fortunate. Thank you very much.